Hello everyone and welcome back to that one playthrough of Kerbal Space Program. I am Kyle once again and you are joining our little probe, the Cheese Knife 3, already in progress of its mission to go to the moon. So without further ado, we are going to get back into this and take a look at whether or not this thing will do a flyby, gather some science, and whether or not we can recover anything from it. Okay, we are going to take this bad boy now, the Cheese Knife number 3. And we're going to, well, I'm going to fast forward as it is already on its way escaping toward, uh, toward the moon. Well, not it's not escaping anything. It's not going to escape Kerbin, but because I can't set any... Why does it still say Map Legend on here? This bug, this bug is annoying. Go away, Map Legend. What is this alarm clock for? Is that... Oh, reconditioning launch pad. That's fine. Anyways, we're going to carry this forward because uh, we need to see if we're actually going to make contact with the moon. The moon is moving a lot slower than it does in vanilla. A lot slower. Considerably slower. I may have misjudged how the moon operates in this version of KSP. Where is the moon at? Do I see Le Moon? I don't think I see Le Moon yet. Okay, I should slow down considerably in my orbit. The hopes would be that Le Moon really, really catches up. Don't know if it's going to happen. Can I see the moon yet? Donde esta la moon? Oh, oh, we got one. We got one. Okay, we're, 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 I fast forward enough. We are going to, in fact, be near the moon. Okay, I still, I still don't see the moon. Oh, there it is. I can see it finally there. The slight edge of it from the sun. Yep, there, there is that bad boy. Okay, we are technically in high orbit, or not high orbit, but high flyby. So we're going to log pressure. And yes, atmospheric pressure scan in high space over moon. Instrument read zero. Who would have thunk it? Let's go ahead and transmit. No usable comms device. Is it because we are too far away from Kerbin? I'd be willing to bet that's what it is. I was hoping two radar thingies, two, two antenna, that's what they're called, would be enough to do this. Clearly it is not. Um, I can still collect the data, so that's good. And I know for a fact that realistically a ground station has got to be visible from this angle. So with that in mind, I just have to hope that after this flyby, we actively uh, can have an orbit that takes us close to Kerbin still, which I have no idea what's going to be the result of this. It's probably going to send me on some wild trajectory into who knows where. For the time being, we do have world's first milestones. We have initiated a first flyby of the moon. 130k plus 104. Oh, that is awesome. That bonus thing that I have. That is... That's fantastic. Oh, this is incredible. Okay. Um, yeah. You have escaped the gravitational influence of Kerbin. That is spectacular. That's a ton of money. I did not expect that much. Oh, I can do all kinds of upgrades at the KSC now. We're going to have a dang party. Everyone's going to have pizza. And we're going to buy, like, the good soda, not the off-brand stuff. Oh, I love it. Okay, well, let's finish this, I suppose, because ultimately I want to see where I end up after I leave the moon and... Ooh. Oh, man. Oh, man, I think this probe is going to... I think this probe is going to make it home. And not in a good way. More in the, like, violent, explosive way. Okay, we do have connection with the ground station. Now we don't have connection with the ground station. What happened here? What is this? What is the red? Do we have a failure? Oh, scrap. What happened? Uh, suffered a... Refunding 4K... I don't know what... That's gotta be a bug, too. Really gotta figure out all these milestones... Or these, uh, bugs I'm having with mods. The recent accomplishments of our space program have attracted contributions from numerous organizations. We have escaped the gravitational influence of the moon. Yes, that was expected to happen with another, like, 150k almost. Holy moly. 
All right, well, we are swimming in the cash now. Um, why did I lose connection with the ground station? Well, I guess my signal just really weak at the moment, so we need to try and get closer. And then when we are really close and have connection, we are going to transmit all the sciences that we have before we come crashing down and explode. Review data, transmit. Grab that science. Perfect. And then review data, transmit the science. Boom. Uh, strategy change. Let's see. Massive scale launches. That's a new one. Or milestones. We've gathered the first scientific data from the moon. Another 100k. Holy crap. Huzzah. There's no such thing as the final frontier. Completed a contract. Start exploring the moon. Another 105k. Um, I just went from being afraid of not having enough cash to upgrade things to probably upgrading everything in the world. And we have enough science to upgrade another node. This is the greatest day ever. The Cheese Knife 3 is the hero we have all been waiting for. Alright, well I'm going to let this thing continue on its path toward its eminent demise. Uh, because, yeah, this thing I believe is not just headed toward Kerbin and its atmosphere. I mean, we are going on like straight flat trajectory here. 5,000 meters per second. This is going to hurt, but it's going to be fun because this was a highly successful mission. It's totally worth it. This thing is expendable beyond all belief. I have no concerns. I mean, it's going to blow up really fast. Yep, that was actually faster than I expected, but okay. All right, well, that was highly successful. Go ahead and call that a win. Let's go into the lab, check out uh, some things. I don't really want aviation. Nothing in here really float my boat. Enhanced survivability is going to be useful because this will give us our first pro, uh, not probes, that's not the word I'm looking for, uh, command modules to put Kerbals into so we can actually kill somebody. I mean, send them into space safely for scientific reasons. And then we've got uh, more electricity stuff. Bigger batteries would actually be useful too. We're gonna go with survivability, enhanced survivability. Heat shields, bigger parachutes, uh, service bay is nice too. Another service module. And then life support obviously gonna be necessary when we start tossing and chucking Kerbals out of the atmosphere. And then 700,000 buckaroos. This map legend thing is really gonna get on my nerves. Hopefully if I restart the game, it'll just fix that. So I know for a fact tracking station is a good one to do because that will allow for us to get patch connects visible in maps. So we're going to do that. We're also going to spend, uh, let's see, if we do 150 on mission control, that'll give us uh, flight planning, which allows us to do maneuver nodes. So that's useful. The launch pad is an interesting one because it limits the size, uh, you know, metrics as far as height, width, Weight really weight's the only thing that ever gets into be an issue for me. But then I also need part count, which comes from vehicle assembly building. However, this is four hundred fifty thousand, and I wasn't going to really spend money on that to begin with. Uh, so I am gonna just do vessel weight and size because if I just use bigger parts in general, for the most part, I think I can still get away with the forty part count for quite some time. I mean, I just proved we can get flybys of the moon. Uh, should be able to do some probes that will do landings on it not too far in the distant future. All right, so we just got a ton of cash for the milestones on the moon because of our strategy. Right now, I can only have one strategy. And because of how successful that was, this is going to be one that's worth upgrading sooner rather than later because the 300 that I would invest in this could potentially grow exponentially. But essentially what I want to be doing with this, right now, the mission for this moon probes one is land in three different biomes with a probe. Should be worth a decent amount of cash. And then once I complete the three probes, then I'm going to want to turn it over to the moon program, which still gives milestones for gains, uh, milestone gains on the moon. But then with the mission of going and planting a flag. So it evolves from unmanned, which we're doing now, into manned. I think should be the best strategy to go with moving forward. And then on here we've got uh, tech. We now can see we're in researching enhanced survivability and then all of our things that we're upgrading in the KSC. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some quick 
warping. All right, and now within here, because of the upgrade, we can have up to seven contracts, which will help us considerably. Okay, we do have a contract to enter orbit of the moon, which would be very good, high value. And I believe when we enter orbit, we will get another milestone. Again, more bonuses from our current administration plan that we have in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this. Uh, plenty of time, well actually infinite time to complete it, so there's no worries there. There's one to start exploring Minmus. I'm not going to do that yet until we go into a uh, an administrative plan that's going to be good for Minmus. I also have an easy contract here to test the LV T45 swivel at the launch site, which is actually a good engine, which might be worth attaching to a rocket just to help it with efficiency, even though it's a test. I'm going to take it because tests are easy, especially at the launch site. Something we might actually use that engine for on a real vehicle, though. Uh, another mod that I have helping me complete a lot of science. Uh, so there's stuff like this where it says, gather the remaining data for experiments in Kerbin. Pay attention to the necessary recovery method. So we've done Mystery Goo already at this uh, at in low space around Kerbin. But obviously when we transmit it, it's not as good as returning things when it comes to the Mystery Goo. So what this is saying is, do the Mystery Goo actually recover it so we'd have to return the vehicle to Kerbin. we're going to get a big contract value which could more than pay for the ship that takes it up there and we'd actually gather a little additional science for it so this one's worth taking for sure and then what we can actually do perform an orbital study for orbit Kerbin. what is this one situation high in space material study low in space material. yeah let's do this one too so we'll have to take two materials bays up there which is going to be heavy and expensive but this is only a vehicle that has to get to orbit and then deorbit because we're going to obviously want to make sure we gather the leftover from the mystery goose so let's do both of these we'll make a vehicle that goes to orbit gathers those scientific data and returns which means we're going to need heat shields and parachutes on that one okay this is one we'll need to wait till i got a little more money for uh, but now that I've upgraded a few buildings, I have the observatory at KSC, which is again applied by uh, the something bodies mod. I'm gonna forget, I'm never gonna remember what all of them are. Uh, but I don't have the money to invest in this yet. But I need to get that going probably sooner rather than later. We do need to also do altimeter scans of Minmus and the Moon, which we will get to at some point. But need to get into orbit first of the Moon. I also have tourism, which not going to get into yet we haven't even sent kerbals up yet and then we have this one to build your first aeroplane which we've already done technically but the contract wants me to still build an airplane with an air breathing engine i wonder if i can just use the bumblebee and complete this contract so my flying machine must have a victim have wings have an air breathing engine only and get airborne okay that shouldn't be too difficult and it gives us 30 reputation which is huge all right, so we've got a good chunk of contracts to start uh, chipping away some stuff here now. Okay, so we've got a couple experiments to do, both in low and high carbon orbit. We've got to do a mystery goo as well as some science junior experiments. So this has a very large payload. I introduce you to the Nye 1. This is maxed out on our part count, so this, is, uh, this had to be tweaked quite a bit before I could get it prepared to go onto the launch pad. Onto our brand new launch pad, I might add, since we've upgraded it. The idea here is that we're going to have to return some stuff to Kerbin. Therefore, there is a mechanism on here with a heat shield as well as a parachute. So this will be our first attempt to actually return experiments from orbit. And this thing should get there pretty well. It's got about 6,000 meters per second of delta V, which is plenty to make sure that we can get to orbit and back. Now, the real question is going to be whether or not this will be enough to get us into a high Kerbin orbit so that we can gather those experiments on the mystery goo. Time will tell. Now this first stage is gonna burn out these boosters. It really should have quite a bit. Uh, let's see, something happened to the swivel. That's not good. This was an experimental engine that I was utilizing. Uh, repair that, please, if we can. Fuel line leaking. Oh, that's not good, that's not good. Uh, I wanted to utilize that and it's exploded. All right, well. We're just gonna see. Uh, we're just gonna see what this rocket can do, regardless. 
Uh, this stage is not going to be able to do very much. Mostly because it only has a pug and two of the Twitch engines, which would have been enough had that last stage engine not blown up completely. What I'm going to do, though, is we're going to try and salvage as much of this as possible. Realistically, this thing won't have enough Delta V or Thrust, I think, to get to orbit at all now. However, we might be able to get it in a high enough of a parabolic arc that we can at least gather some of that uh, Science Junior science and then come crashing back down gently because we do have a heat shield and a parachute. I don't know if it's going to work at all, though. So this thing looks like it's struggling to keep some balance. Uh, just because those Twitch engines are the only gimbal that we have, so it's not doing a great job. Let's see if I can get us a little bit more in line with our prograde marker, so we can at least start to keep accelerating. This is really, really low speeds, so ultimately this is not uh, doing too well. I might limit the gimbal on these, because that might be the reason why it's bobbing around so much. Oh, we're about to flip. Come on. No, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Give me something to work with here. Oh, jeez. Had that engine not blown up, this thing would be a lot more successful. Yeah, we're going to lose altitude here in a second. So, um, let's go ahead and ditch this stage entirely. This stage will not be able to do anything either, I'm pretty sure, because it just does not have gimbal nor enough thrust. So, let's go ahead and get back to the drawing board and see if we can retest that engine, shall we? Alright, we're now going to work with the Nye 2, which has a few minor modifications. I got rid of the center engine because I realized when I was going to replace it with the Valiant again. The thuds are actually more powerful and more efficient at every stage in their ISP, so I decided to ditch that, and then all I need is these two boosters here, and we end up with a rocket that should actually have more Delta V than the previous iteration, which makes me feel substantially better. So, as soon as these boosters burn off, we might lose a little bit of thrust uh, overall, but it should start to counteract pretty quickly. And it looks like... Yeah, we're starting to go positive again. That's not the best way to do it, obviously. I should try to make sure that uh, I'm a little better at that in the future. Because, uh, yeah, it's going to start to create more and more issues if I'm not making sure I have enough thrust in early stages especially. But I think this thing will do its job again. It's not going too far. We're going to start getting some earlier tilt going in this one, I think, as well, too. Just because I've been doing a pretty poor job of making sure that my overall ascent profiles have a good gravity turn. And if I can start to clean that up a little bit, it will make everything more efficient. And we should be able to have more efficient later stages too, especially when we get into stage two on this, kind of the vacuum stage. But I want to make sure we're high enough. Right now we're climbing, timed apoapsis is climbing as well. Something just blew up, was that my boosters way back there? Okay, I'm going to leave it a little higher than 45, because I don't have great altitude on this. And I would prefer it if we started to get a little further away, a little safer, while still building some horizontal momentum. So yeah, clearly I need to still, still add some more thrust to these early stages. Probably could have gone with three thuds here, maybe even four, and ditched the boosters altogether. I, I'm not 100% sure, but we'll... We'll fine-tune this stuff as we get a little bit further along. This should start to get a bit more efficient, too, now that we're higher up. These have an ISB of 305, I think. Maybe it's higher than that. Yeah, 305 is what we're at right now, and I'm pretty sure that's as high as they get. So we should be operating on maximum efficiency on these. Start to see if we can pick up a little bit more horizontal momentum. Apoapsis is approaching 70 kilometers, so I'm feeling a lot more comfortable in this ascent. So this first stage will get our apoapsis above the atmosphere, and then the second one I'm going to keep it angled pretty far, because, again, thrust is not high enough. 
We're just gonna let this go as soon as possible. I'm gonna ditch my fairing early here too, so that way we have some better first to weight ratio. Currently timed apoapsis is hovering right at 125, 126. Okay, so it is increasing finally. And we don't have any failures at this point in this launch either. And as long as the at timed apoapsis increases, I'm going to let myself go a little bit more horizontal each time I see that time increase. Because I should be buying myself more and more time, but I want to start getting more and more horizontal velocity. I'm pretty comfortable with the amount of delta V that's in this stage. This thing should get us comfortably to an orbit. It's really just a question of the thrust. I do a little rotation here too because I want to get my make sure my solar panels are gonna help us out. I only have two on this satellite. And while we're here, since we're already in low Kerbin orbit, I am gonna grab uh, the materials study from low Kerbin orbit. We're going to keep it because we're going to put it on the little science return mechanism that we've got on this. All right, and this thing is actually really close to orbit now. I'm going to go ahead and shut her down because we've got about almost three minutes to apoapsis, really high. We should be, should be more than good on this now. All right, and I've got to do this mystery goo from low Kerbin orbit or low Kerbin space, not orbit, because we're technically not in orbit. Keep that. And now we should be able to actually do some maneuver nodes, because we upgraded some things, so we can actually see how much delta V it's going to take to complete this uh, vehicle getting into orbit. 617, we've got 400 in this stage. The next stage has got a ton as well, an additional 1300, so a little over-engineered, but uh, in a good way, I would say. All right, we've got it lined up with our maneuver node. So as soon as we get into, let's see, burn time, 44 seconds, when we've got about 22 seconds left until that node will start the burn. And I went too far, because I'm a dunce. So we'll burn this as hard as we can. Should be, should be fine. All right, and then our final stage to kick us the rest of the way. I do not have gimbal on this engine, so we're completely relying on the ability of this probe core to do the reaction wheels, which is not very strong. We are in orbit, so let's go ahead and just kill it. Rearrange my camera. Now, the next thing we need to do is really just kind of burn until we have a high enough orbit to get to high Kerbin science. Let's extend our thermometer, or not our thermometer, our antenna. We need to extend a thermometer. We don't have probe control right now, so I'll have to wait until we get another ground station. And then what we'll need to do is actually see if we can line the spacecraft up with our prograde marker. Because I don't have a lot of control with this really crummy reaction wheel. Didn't have enough part count to really give myself a better reaction wheel, but we'll deal with it. All right, we've got a ground station. The problem is, see if we can tilt this thing. Okay, it does have pretty good control, actually. And I don't care where our apoapsis ends up being around the planet, so we're just going to... Uh, Burn straight prograde here. Get rid of that node. Let's see how high this gets us. Right now we're at uh, apoapsis 400 kilometers, 500, 600, 700. We need eight. And kill the engine. That'll be perfect. And then I'm going to tilt our vehicle back up just a smidge so that we can get that solar panel right in line with the sun so we don't lose electrical charge right about there should be good all right 
And then I will see you guys all when we're at our apoapsis height. Gonna speed it all up. Alright, and as expected, materials study is available on science here now, so we'll just run that. So we get this second bay open. We're gonna keep that. That's 30 science. That's a good, good chunk. And then I should be able to collect all of the science. So yes, we have material study, material study, and mystery goo. I don't have any other experiments on here. So now what we're gonna do is point this guy retrograde, not prograde, retrograde. And take a look at the map and we just wanna burn this down so that we are below the atmosphere. That's actually probably too far. So I'm actually gonna take it a little bit back the other direction, 9,000 is way too low. We'll get it down to like 30. 45, 40 to 30. That way we don't go too fast. We don't really give ourselves a, a hard time re-entering the atmosphere. There we go. 37 is pretty good. Okay. So we'll speed up once again. There's the KSC. Smile, everyone. Yeah, and as expected, we're going to be coming in with over 4 kilometers per second of uh, velocity here. So... I don't have, I don't have probe control. That's actually something I did not think about. This is very problematic, actually. Should have gotten rid of the rest of this vehicle a little bit sooner. We're going to be way over the ocean, so I don't know if there's any ground stations anywhere near there. But we can stage. We can get rid of SAS. Pretty cool shot right here. Whoa, there goes the rest of it. Oh, that is amazing. I hope I'm not about to run into something. We might be passing whatever it is though. Whatever's left of that thing. Alright, let's take a look at how everything's doing here. Heat overall. Get rid of the vessel. Hottest part should be... Hottest part is our communitron. Shouldn't the hottest part be the heat shield at the moment? Not really sure. Anywho, looks like it's performing pretty well. Apoapsis is falling. We're gonna... This is gonna be a real comfortable, easy descent now. Nothing to it, just like that. Just had to figure out the ascent vehicle. Run through about half of our ablator. Which is goes to show that heat shields will actually be more viable in this JNSQ version of KSP versus the vanilla version. And then we'll go ahead and just speed this up until the point where we can deploy our parachute, which I should be able to still do all staging. about five kilometers we'll go ahead and deploy the chute Start to slow us down a little bit more and full deployment this was probably the only thing on the vehicle that I was definitely worried about was the parachute because I didn't have any redundancy for it so if that part failed I uh, think we would have had some serious issues and with a gentle touchdown back to Kerbin we should be able to recover this and complete both of these contracts and just like that, 63.4 additional science uh, recovered all of the return vehicles parts, obviously. And we'll jump in here real quick just to take a look at what's in research and development. Now, something I changed in my settings is I made it so all the ones I cannot research are invisible. So I won't be able to look ahead and see where I want to plan for, which I think will make it a little more fun. All right, so first and foremost, we're going to do small reentry pods. This will give us the onion reentry vehicle, which means we will be able to send our first Kerbals into space, finally. And then next, I think I'm going to do gizmos. This has a couple new solar panels, a better battery, uh, radiator panels, which I don't think I need yet, but a high gain antenna will be useful as well. So we'll do that one. And through that mission two, we have returned to the surface from orbit for the first time, which is a little accomplishment. Unfortunately, we lost money from it, it looks like, because it was an accomplishment that wasn't related to the moon, which kind of sucks. But I think this is also a good place to go ahead and call it for today's episode. Had some successful missions, got some contracts done, tons of science, tons of expansion within the KSC. So until next time, I am Kyle. This has been That One Playthrough of Kerbal Space Program, and I will see you in the next episode. Have a wonderful day.